American doctor, Bostonian, patriot, politician, and soldier, Dr. Joseph Warren, played a key role in early American revolutionary events. He was the one who dispatched Paul Revere on that famous ride and was the hero of the Battle of Bunker Hill, where he was killed in action. Warren's heroics at Bunker Hill were famous throughout early America, north, south, east, and west. Innumerable counties, streets, squares, and public buildings were named after him. A dozen or more wildly contradictory eyewitness accounts of his demise became the stuff of legend. Some had Warren deliver long patriotic speeches, others had him killed instantly and randomly near the end of the battle. Can we tell what really happened on that fateful day, June 17, 1775? In the 1970s, a Dr. Lester Luntz a forensic dentist photographed an old poster of Joseph Warren's skull in the musty basement of Boston's Old South Meeting House. The originals are long lost. The notion that these photos are genuine seems far-fetched, but I have traced their provenance in original source documents to their production in 1855 or 1856 by Harvard Medical School physicians and anatomists John Collins Warren and his son, Jonathan Mason Warren. These photos, a near frontal view, side and rear views, are exactly what they purport to be. With technology, we may finally solve the mystery of the last moments of a true American hero. The three old photos enable programming of 3D animation. We gain a clear view of the entry and exit wounds from every angle. The fatal entry wound is in the left maxilla, or cheek bone, above the molars on that side. The nearby false teeth are said to have been made by Paul Revere, enabling a definitive identification of Warren's remains the year following the battle. Unfortunately, the pictures, some of the earliest known forensic pictures taken anywhere in the world, do not include a ruler or scale to gauge the size of the entry wound. By comparison with measures from over 150 Northern European adult male skulls, as compiled by Professor Howells at Harvard University's Peabody Museum of Archaeology and Ethnography, we can approximate the size of a standardized and little varying measure, the orbital diameter. Now we have a scale in the picture. From this, we can calculate that the entry wound was made by a 54 caliber projectile, plus or minus four one hundredths of an inch. British infantry muskets were standardized to a fearsome 75 caliber, considerably larger than the entry wound suffered by Dr. Warren. In contrast, British officers outfitted their own weapons, pistols, or light muskets. All surviving specimens of those weapons are 60 caliber or less. Only one of the numerous accounts of Joseph Warren's last heroic moments involve a British officer. This account is from the British side. The celebrated Dr. Warren who commanded in the provincial trenches at Charlestown while he was bravely fending himself against several opposing regulars, was killed in a cowardly manner by an officer's servant, but the fellow was instantly cut to pieces. So, according to our modern forensic analysis, this is the true account. Joseph Warren was recognized on the battlefield Perhaps an officer attempted to take him prisoner, but he was shot down, execution style, on the spot.